Welcome to the channel guys, BLN437, and today we're going to be debuting the Immortal Mike Trout, the 99 overall that you get from the Immortal Collections program. Now, before we even get into that, we're going to show his stats and stuff like that, but I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what's going to be happening, what's going to be going on. I wanted to stream today, I couldn't stream today, I have bronchitis, I have a cough drop in my mouth, a lot of crazy things are going on, a lot of crazy things have been happening, but hey, it is what it is. You know, we'll be streaming again tomorrow, I'll be back on YouTube, and then on Wednesday, I'll be streaming on Twitch, but we'll get into that a little bit later on in the video. These are the stats for Mike Trout. I mean, they're just great. Better against right right-handers than he is lefties, but still good against lefties. Great defense. I, I mean, there's nothing else you can say. This card is an absolute beast. I can't wait to try him out. Now, let's get back to what I was talking about with the channel. As we're facing the South Beach Bums, Cheeseburger underscore 31 underscore, we're facing Felix Hernandez. I'm going to be streaming tomorrow on Twitch. And, I mean, not Twitch, I'm sorry, on YouTube. On Wednesday, I will be streaming on Twitch. Now, the reason for that is I've never done a stream on Twitch, and I, oh, I've always wanted to try a stream on Twitch just to see the difference between the two, between YouTube and Twitch. So, bear with me, guys. I'm going to put up a video when I'm live on Twitch on Wednesday for you guys to check out, so that way you guys can go on the Twitch stream. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be streaming around, I'm shooting for a 6.30, 7 o'clock start. Um, but it's probably going to be 7, 7.30, and on Wednesday, same thing, maybe 7, 7.30 as Mike Trout comes up to bat, and, um, for some of you guys that are probably wondering if I do make the transition to Twitch, I don't know if I'm going to make the transition to Twitch, as Mike Trout, believe it or not, is going to get a triple out of this, as this is a post-com, not a live-com, because you guys don't want to see me, trust me, I look awful, but anyways, back to what I, <laughs> back to what I was saying. If I ever do make the switch to Twitch, if Twitch really, you know, is, is the way to go and I like Twitch and I want to stream on Twitch, that doesn't mean I'm not going to do anything with this channel. This YouTube channel is still going to have content coming through. And one of the things that I want to do, one of the things that I, I really can't wait to do, because I haven't done it yet, even though there's already been things that have happened this off season, is I want to get back to making off-season pretty much recap videos. Now, for some of you guys that are new to the channel or maybe new to the channel and this is the first time you're seeing this video... What I did last year was I went over some of the major trades and signings that happened in the offseason last season and kind of just gave my opinions on them as not only David Peralta, but Ernie Banks goes for another home run, back-to-back -back dingers. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm focusing on the gameplay instead of focusing on what I'm saying. But yes, I'm going to be doing recaps of signings, trades, and everything. And I'm going to be talking about Brian McCann and... Josh Donaldson signing with the Atlanta Braves on one-year deals. That video will be out tomorrow, maybe, I want to say afternoon-ish, 2, 3, or earlier. We'll see. Um, and that's pretty much that's pretty much what I want to do with that. I also want, want to change up the games that I'm playing as well. I've been playing, obviously, a lot of MLB The Show on this channel and just been streaming a lot of MLB The Show. But what I want to do is I want to stream uh, Blackout and you know call of duty multiplayer i've gotten better on blackout i've gotten better on multiplayer uh, i want you guys to see the progression in those games and how well i've been doing um but baseball's not going to go anywhere baseball's still my main focus i still love talking about baseball i still you know i still love everything about the game of baseball and that's never going to leave this channel this channel will always be based off of the show and baseball and just my love for baseball and um but yeah i mean other than that you know, I'm going to talk about, you know, the James Paxton deal in a second here, but I just want to talk to you guys about what's been going on with me here a little bit. I, I suffered bronchitis, uh, I want to say about a week ago, and I've been having a really bad cough, and it's just been crazy, man. It's been really, really crazy. I have a cough drop right now. I'm, I'm doing my best right now even to just make this video and not cough, but I'm having fun with it. I really am, and, well, I'm not really having fun with the bronchitis, but I'm having fun getting better and, and trying to get better so that way I can stream tomorrow and stream Wednesday and even make these videos about what's going on in the off season. Um, but one of the other things I wanted to talk about now was the James Paxton deal. The Big Maple was coming to New York and the Yankees traded away Justice Sheffield. Uh, Eric Swanton, I believe, was the other one. And I don't remember who the third prospect was. I know Eric Swanton is the number 22 rated prospect. Uh, Justice Sheffield is the Yankees' number one rated prospect or was the Yankees' number one rated prospect. And the Yankees in return got... James Paxton from the Seattle Mariners. Now, I initially, when I saw the trade, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I sat there and I was like, we traded away Justice Sheffield for a 29-year-old pitcher that's about to be 30, or if not, has turned 30, I believe now. He just turned 30. He's going to be entering his age 30 season with the New York Yankees. I think his birthday's in November, so he just turned 30. 
And I sat there and I said, that's a weird move, you know. That you would think that if you're going to trade some of your young guns, you're going to get a young ace. And then I thought about it for a second. And, and bear with me, I'm going to get to the negatives here with, with the trade as well. James Paxton has never thrown, which is, can be a negative, but also a positive here. And I'm going to look at it in a positive way. James Paxton has never thrown 200 innings in a season. I believe his average is 150 to 160, but he's never gone past 170, 180, 190, or even 200. Now, when I thought about that, I remember when Matt Scherzer signed his deal with the Washington Nationals. And the one thing that Scott Boris and everybody else kept saying um, was a big key factor into signing Scherzer was that his arm is fresh compared to most guys that hit the market at his age. And I had to look at the type of market there is for pitching this offseason for the New York Yankees, other than Patrick Corbin, who I believe is a great left-handed pitcher that the Yankees should sign. Other than that, James Paxton is probably the, the second best option that was out there in the market, when it cut via, whether it's via trade or signing. And I look at it and I think, yeah, he hasn't gone, you know, 106, you know, he hasn't gone 180, 190, 200 innings. And maybe he'll get fatigued come the second half of the season, if he's able to stay healthy, obviously, and the Yankees make it to the postseason, which I believe we all believe the Yankees will make it to the postseason. I believe currently as a wildcard team, not as a division team, because I don't believe that this move gives them the division just yet. I think the Yankees need to make two or three more moves before that happens. Um, but game is played on, you know, the game is going to be played on the field, not on paper. But as much as that's a negative, I believe that that's a positive. I believe that the Yankees getting James Paxton him not going 200 innings in his career yet, and him kind of having more of a fresh arm because he's never had any injuries to his pitching arm, shoulder, everything, elbow. That's all been fine. He's never had any issues with, with you know, with that. It's just been other things. I know, I believe one was his back. I'm not too caught up on his injury pass, but I know he, does, he, hasn't, he hasn't had any type of arm issues because they've been talking about it as well. But the way I look at it is that he can have a fresh arm, um, you know, maybe that fatigue won't be fatigue. Maybe it'll be that he's able to handle it later on. And if you think about it, maybe he has an extra, you know, year or two of electric stuff that most guys his age or entering his age won't have because they've pitched so many innings. You know, CC Sabathia comes into mind. Felix Hernandez, another one that comes into mind. But that remains to be seen, obviously. We don't know for sure. We can only tell. Now, the other thing that I'll sit here and I'll say is that another positive here. It solidifies the Yankees' rotation. If you think about it, and, and this is just a projected rotation. It's, I'm not saying this is going to happen, and I don't believe it will happen. I, I hope it does, but I don't believe it does. If the Yankees are able to sign Patrick Corbin, the Yankees will have Severino. Potentially, Paxton would be your I mean, Paxton, Paxton would be your third starter, but you would have Corbin as your two, Paxton as your three, and then Tanaka as your fourth, and Sabathia as the fifth. And if you think about that rotation... If you could have James Paxton as your third starter, that's not a bad three guy. I mean, that's that's a really good third starter. Just like T Tanaka being a four starter would be a better four than any other four out there in the American League. And the way you look at it when it comes to CeCe, I mean, CeCe ain't a bad number five. CeCe at this point of his career is a number five in my opinion, but a good number five, a, a, a above average number five. So there's that. Now, the negatives is, yes, the Yankees lost Justice Sheffield. Yes, Justice Sheffield has a ton, I mean, a ton of potential. Even though he had some issues, you know, 116 innings, he had 150 strikeouts, but with 50 walks, command has been his issue, and it still is his issue. Most people believe that he's he's going to be ready by the end of the season, maybe, you know, beginning of next season, or the uh, following season. I think he's a two-year project. He's 22 years old. If he comes up at 24 years old, Still got enough control, still have enough time to make him great, to have him be great. Um, but I believe that this is a trade that both Seattle and the Yankees both won. There are some negatives. Yes, Paxton not being healthy is a negative. Yes, you know, I'm at least injury prone, I should say, because he is healthy currently. But him being injury prone is a negative. Yes, him not going 200 innings is a negative. Yes, the Yankees have less control over James Paxton as they would have Justice Sheffield, absolutely. But the positives are is that it solidifies the Yankees' rotation. The Yankees need to win now anyways. And on top of that, he, he you know, just as much as he has, you know, he's had injuries and he hasn't gone 200 plus innings, that arm is fresh. And I believe that that arm can, can pay dividends. I believe so. And if you can get another guy in your rotation to help you out, that's 
even better, and that's where Corba comes into play. Now, the other thing about the deal is is that Justin Sheffield could either pan out or not pan out. We live in a day and age where we value prospects over actual proven talent. Actual proven talent is actual proven talent for a reason. You just can't sit here and take your chance on a prospect, and I believe that's, you know, the philosophy that teams need to start having now. Don't worry about prospects. Worry about winning now if you have a chance to win now, and that's what they have. So that's kind of just my thoughts on that deal. Like I said, I'm going to be doing more of these type of videos throughout the offseason. If you guys like it, make sure to leave a like. If you guys like some of the gameplay, even though I didn't really talk much about the gameplay, leave a like as well. I'll definitely be talking more about the gameplay next time, and I'll be doing a live come, hopefully. And if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe. For more MLB The Show, MLB videos, just anything in general, even some Call of Duty stuff that I'm going to be doing later on. And I will see you guys in the next one as, you know, Mike Trout here is just, he, he was a goon in his debut. I mean, three for four, awesome. Awesome, man. That's just been great.